Hello, and welcome back. It's been a few years since I've done any videos, and I want to say thanks to everyone who has watched the videos while I've been pursuing other interests. It's 2017, and time to continue to explore this wonderful collection of Colt semi-automatic pistols. We're going to resume our journey with the Colt Super 38. We'll take a look at some beautiful pre-war examples that are in wonderful condition. There are several examples to take a look at, such as the Super 38 I'm holding. This pistol shipped in 1931 and was fitted with king grips, king sights, and a king trigger. As you can see, the pistol has been well taken care of in the 76 years since it originally shipped from Colt. The beauty of the Colt pre-war finish looks great, and I hope the camera does it justice. And within the collection of Super 38s, we'll also take a look at the Match model, or the Super Match. This is the brother of the government model National Match pistol, which featured a hand hone action, match barrel, and package sights, all from the factory for just a few dollars more than the standard version. And after taking a closer look at the Super 38, we're going to look at the Colt licensed versions manufactured in other countries. We will start with the Norwegian version of the model of 1911, Norway started negotiations with Colt in 1915 for production of the 1911, and the first 1911, or excuse me, Norwegian 1911s were assembled in 1917. We have many examples to take a look at from this collection, including the one I am holding from 1928. And don't put your passports away because from Norway we're heading to Argentina to take a look at their version of the model 1911. Argentina loved the 1911. We have several several excellent examples to take a look at, including a few rare items. This part of our trip will include examples from the original Colts that shipped to Argentina. After our trip overseas, we'll come back to take a look at the development and history of the Colt Model O 22 caliber pistols. We'll start with some interesting examples from Springfield Armory and their efforts to develop a large frame pistol that would cycle a 22 cartridge. From there, we'll go on to the Colt Ace and its introduction in 1931. This pistol was an economical way to practice with an inexpensive cartridge using a Model O frame size. We have several excellent examples to take a closer look at from the 10 years of pre-war production, plus many more from the post-war years. After we take a look at the Colt Ace, we will take a look at other large frame 22 caliber pistol by Colt, the service model Ace. Introduced in 1936, the service Model A's featured an improvement in design with a Williams floating chamber that helped to better simulate the recoil of a 45. From there we'll move on to take a look at the conversion units and their development. Introduced in 1938, the conversion units were an excellent way to change your government Model 45 to 22 if you wanted to save some dough on the practice range. As you can see in the case below me, we have more than a few examples to look at. We won't skip the 22 to 45 conversion unit that could turn your service model ACE into a 45. Not too many of these were made. I hope you will join us for the upcoming videos and as always, thanks for watching.